thousands of mourners fill this street in Baghdad. Iraq is the first to hold funeral processions for the five Iraqis and five Iranians killed by a U.S. airstrike on Friday. Many are dressed in black, waving Iraqi flags. And militia members are out in force, showing their loyalty to the two key figures killed in Friday's attack. Iraq's Abu Mahdi al muhandis deputy commander of an Iranian-backed coalition of militias, and General Qasem Soleimani, the head of Iran's elite military unit and the country's number two man. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani visited the family of Soleimani, sharing harsh words for the U.S. The Americans are not aware of the big mistake they've made. They will face the consequences of their crime, not only today, but also in the coming years. Soleimani was the mastermind behind Iran's military engagement in the Middle East for the last two decades. He was a close ally of Iran's supreme leader. U.S. President Donald Trump says the airstrike was necessary to prevent an imminent attack on Americans. We took action last night to stop a war. We did not take action to start a war. I have deep respect for the Iranian people. They are a remarkable people with an incredible heritage and unlimited potential. We do not seek regime change. However, the Iranian regime's aggression in the region, including the use of proxy fighters to destabilize its neighbors, must end, and it must end now. Soleimani is blamed for attacks that killed thousands of people across the region. But many in Iran say his death amounts to a declaration of war. As angry militia members in Iraq and Iran swear vengeance for the death of their leaders, the U.S. is advising all of its citizens in Iraq to leave immediately. Well, let's bring in now political analyst Rachel Rizzo. She's with me in the studio. She's a fellow at the Robert Bosch Foundation. Good to see you, Rachel. Now, both yeah. Tehran and Washington, of course, they've accused the other of being the aggressor. Um, of course, Iran saying that the US President Donald Trump has crossed a line here in this action. A little perspective, though, from you. Is this US action unprecedented? So Donald Trump has a history of making um, surprising actions, right? He bombed Syria after he took office. Uh, he recently killed ISIS leader uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. But I think what's surprising here is just the escalation. I mean, this would really be like Iran taking out the U.S. Secretary of Defense or the U.S. Uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff. So I think in terms of what this means for the region, for the Middle East region, and what it means uh, geopolitically, it is unprecedented. Absolutely. I think that's a really important point to make. And now the US says that uh, this action was to prevent further Iranian attack plans. I think a lot of people will wanting, be wanting to know. I mean, do we have concrete evidence of those attack plans? Well, as always, it depends on who you ask. Um, U.S. officials have said this was a defensive, decisive action. Uh, Donald Trump said they took this action to stop a war, not start a war, and then it saved American lives. But I think given those claims and given the gravity of the decision that was made, um, Congress especially uh, and the U.S. public are, are going to want to see evidence of that, and they deserve evidence of that. Is there a strategy? at work here. It does seem like a very serious escalation. Do you think that President Trump would have carried it out if he was not aware, cognizant of the potential consequences? So I think it's pretty hard to discern a Trump strategy uh, for the Middle East. I mean, obviously pushing back against Iran, countering Iranian influence, supporting U.S. allies Saudi Arabia and Israel is a mainstay of that strategy. But uh, beyond that, we're not quite sure exactly if he's aware of what the long-term consequences uh, mean for this. I think given the recklessness of, of the Trump administration in the past and the fact that he has made so many last minute, seemingly unthought out decisions, um, it's, it's really questionable about whether or not President Trump has fully thought through the potential repercussions of this action. Rachel, I do wanna ask you, do you think this is electioneering? 
Well, who knows? I mean, I think that, you know, you take a look at Trump's tweet that he made after uh, after the strike, right? It was just an American flag. So he is going to use this to push a very pro-American message, a pro-U.S. power message, and to drum up support amongst his base. All right. Bosch fellow Rachel Rizzo, thanks a lot for coming in and joining us.